I was there when he was unloading and he put them out. I knew instantly what they were. Just returned from this year's 2023 Pate Swap Meet. This is down in Fort Worth, Texas at the Texas Motor Speedway. And it's just a great, great event. You get guys from all over Texas and there's some amazing vehicles there, amazing signs. I went last year and had a great time. The weather was absolutely perfect last year. And this year, definitely, definitely not. They had thunderstorms and I had an opportunity pop up here at home the day that I was scheduled to leave. And it was just a once in a lifetime deal that fell in my lap and I had to jump on it. So I stayed home that day to get things buttoned up, take care of it. Big news and probably tell a little more about that on an upcoming episode here on the channel when we get around to that. I had just about two-thirds of a day to walk around down there at the Pate Swap Meet this year and use the time that I had. And so in the inside, there's a lot of more established vendors that are there every year. And this year I parked out on the grass. So the strategy was to walk around those. And those are more your guys that are there once and cleaning out a garage or not your real established type that kind of bring the same stuff every year. Not that there's not rotation on the inside, but on the outside, there's just better opportunity for there to be some rotation. So with that said, I got out, looked around. So one of my first stops was a guy's booth and he had a lot of like Mercedes Benz 190 and some Fentail. And I think he said there might be a piece or two in here that's Pagoda. So a lot of this kind of hard to come by stuff and Maybe expensive if you were really needing it. So he hit me a price on all this that was kind of high and I was kind of debating whether or not to get together. And I was like, you know what, I'll just do it. There's a lot of individual pieces that can come out of this. The 190's not necessarily like a top shelf collector car. Even if there was one piece here, two or three pieces that really did well um you'd probably pay for all the load and then just keep splitting the rest off so i went ahead and jumped and then he also had these really cool industrial lights and these were something that came out of some building that was commercial remodel and a buddy of mine looked at him when i Took him back to his booth where I was kind of stashing stuff to pick it up after the meet. And he said, man, those are really cool. Those are good quality, not just something that you'd go buy at the home improvement store. Like they're nice commercial lights. And this is probably less than half of them. I think there are about 11 or 12 total. This is just a smaller box out here to show the representation. I did get this... 57 58 Plymouth Dash Cluster. I've always done pretty good with those on eBay, and so figured that was a good piece that somebody might want to get a hold of. Then I always look for these old trailer hitches. About half the time, you find these earlier ones that are actually marked with the application. And so that one, you see, they didn't stamp it well enough but it's 1960 through 69. <laughs> One of those years, I'm guessing it's probably 60 to 64, but luckily Joe has every model year of Ford down at the Rust Ranch, and so that's kind of the nexus for identifying individual pieces. Just take it down there, 
and hold it up and figure out what it is. Then I did pick up a hubcap for the Morris Minor Traveler station wagon. I am actively trying to sell that car. We did get it running, driving. I put that out on a Will It Run video. And I've just realized that my dad is at the age where I may not have a huge amount of time left with him. And so I want to prioritize any project cars that are his or that I work on with him ahead of some of my own. And so for that reason, I have the Morris in the garage at my house right now. And I would just like to get that space back for one of my dad's cars to start on with him. Then probably the neatest story of the swap meet, other than my big blowout item, <laughs> was this uh, 79 Ford three-quarter ton new old stock front hubcap with the cutout and so I walked up to this guy's booth and he looks at me real skeptical I picked this thing up they were just getting ready to tarp over for rain and he's like he kind of scowls at me and he's like you don't look like the type that would own a 79 Ford four-wheel drive I said well you know buddy of mine does and so we're kind of into stuff all stocked down to the hubcaps and you could see like the whole demeanor his face just changes he's like oh he said all stocked down to the hubcaps he said sonny that qualifies you for the 20 percent discount <laughs> so i'm actively trying to kind of make a set of these i have the rears which of course they're easy to find because they're shared by the two-wheel drive so if i could find another one of these four-wheel it'd be pretty good to get a hold of. Then I did find a pair of 67, 68 C10 hubcaps. And anybody remembers down in the Sherman, Texas auction, I did buy that orange truck. And so this will be just something nice to stick on it and be able to take pictures, kind of dress it up a little for when I go to resell that thing. Then I hit a guy that had a lot of like leftover parts from an old salvage that they had cleaned out. And so these center caps are 77 through 9 Olds Delta 88. Then these are 73 Impala headlight bezels. These are slightly different from the Caprice. They have just a few more squares. 59 Chevy El Camino and station wagon taillight bezels, Ford Fairmont taillight lens. This is really a hard piece to find because they are actually just glued in around the edges. And so as that adhesive breaks down, these will just come loose and fall out. And so a lot of people are looking for them because they go missing found a 67 Ford station wagon tail light. Guy was just wanting to clean the garage and said, stack up a pile, make me an offer. And this was one of the pieces I grabbed. I also got from him this interesting little V8 hood release handle. And it's probably late 30s, early 40s. Stuff like this, I just enjoy the thrill of being able to identify it from the picture books. I know maybe that's kind of a cheesy thing to get a charge out of, but for me to walk around one of these swap meets and just a bunch of unidentified stuff in a bin and to be able to pull it out, figure out what it goes to, and actually find the person who needs it, and get it into their hands to finish a project car. There's just a certain satisfying thrill in that. Then I did pick up a 60 Impala dash insert. Be a good piece to complete a dash out. Then I did find a couple Model T radiator caps from the Model T Ford Horde auction. I bought a bunch of pieces, piles, 
of fenders, grill shells, things to make, wall hangers, and I've been piecing those together and taking them to the flea market with my dad. Seems like there's good interest in those. I just kind of like to make them complete, so little pieces like this that help the radiator have the finished look and not just an open hole in the top, that's a good thing to go with it. A really neat piece I found was this 1934 Studebaker dash cluster. It's just got a great old Art Deco look to it. Unfortunately not complete, some pieces broken, but the main thing is that that bezel is there and it's in good shape and repairable. I think flat glass and speedometer needles and that sort of thing wouldn't be the end of the world. Uh, I ship this off to some of the gauge restoration places and a lot of that they'd still be able to kind of work around but you have to have the piece to start with to be able to be the core for restoration and there it is so hopefully somebody that's missing that will be really grateful to get a hold of that for their project. I did get the cool little God is my co-pilot license plate. I've got a couple others that are this theme and that's stuff that I look for. It's just good, good subject matter and kind of uncommon. You don't see it everywhere and so that'll be a good piece to go along with that stuff. The map rack sign, I kind of paid up on that but I do have the rack for it and the map collection so that was kind of the last piece to complete that out. Found this 1960 Oldsmobile pictured gasoline can. I don't think they had any association at all with Oldsmobile. They just picked that car and didn't disguise it like a lot of the other manufacturers do for their generic car pictures. And so that's a pretty neat one that if you found a 60 Olds guy, he probably would do a somersault to get a hold of that can. Be a super cool piece to display in the trunk of a 60 Olds at a car show. Then I found this 1979 Nova Concourse Grill, and this is a pretty hard piece to find. They're long and fragile without a lot of support from the back. They stick out in the front of the car, so you always see them broken. And they do repro a different one for like the 75, 6, 7, 8 cars. And this one that's specific to the Nova Concourse, it has just a little bit different of a mesh to it. And then it has the little C crest in the marker lights there. So that makes it specific to that Concourse. And if somebody's restoring one, you either have to find non-existent NOS stuff or a used one like this and clean it up. Then out of that junkyard inventory, I got all these pieces of stainless side trim, which I'm almost certain are 64 Galaxy. And so I'm taking those down to Joe also with the trailer hitch, and I'll hold them up to a car and figure out what they go to. Now for the grand reveal of the budget blower. This is... A friend of mine brought a print block set. Now these are for old linotype out of newspapers and you can see all the different brands. There's Chevrolet, I think there's a Lincoln Zephyr, there's Mercury, there's just all the little emblems and auto parts, auto themes. Trying to go slow to get this to focus. The bargain used cars. Just incredible killer subject matter that you're not going to find anywhere else. And this was one, I was there when he was unloading and he put them out. I knew instantly what they were 
and I was sitting there just really sweating it in myself because I knew that I wanted them, I knew what they were, and I have a specific project idea in mind to use them, and there's a lot of very small ones in here which are what I'm looking for for that project, and I just had to jump and do it. I had left a day late for the swap meet, so I knew I wasn't going to get to see it all, and had this opportunity at home that's going to eat a good chunk of money, and so I told myself, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot down at the swap meet, and then this happens. I'm really glad I did it because this is a collection and a group that in a person's lifetime, I would never run across it again. And if I'd walked away, uh, I think the remorse of not having it would have been way, way outpacing the <laughs> remorse of uh, absorbing picking it up and and uh, justifying buying it. So they're here, I own them, and I've got a project in mind for them upcoming, and that'll be quite a ways away because this is gonna be a busy several years coming up. If you actually look and count the number, there's honestly not that much of a spread uh, per piece. And because it was a friend of mine, uh, he did cut me a deal that was a chunk under the asking price. And I've got a few more of these, but the opportunity to build a collection like this all the rest of the way in one whack, you just really don't find that. And these blocks in general, they're just very hard to find because they were used for current printing and after that model year was done, there's no reason to keep them around. I mean, after that logo was done, some of these logos, five, ten years, they'd move on to something else. And unfortunately, that lead isn't super stable. So if it does get wet, then they can just kind of kind of go away. They just get a chalky oxidization and... You do have to handle these really carefully uh, if it'll focus. There we go. Very, very fine surface to them and all the little details. If you get nicks on these, the party's over because there's no fixing them. There's no dressing them. And these have all been stored very well. He He said he had picked and chose out of a lot of others that were marginal and subpar under what these are and built this set to where it is. So the amount of work, the amount of effort to get there, uh, this was just a once in a lifetime opportunity that I had to get a hold of. So here's a little more of my existing stamp collection that I already had. See there's some oil companies and some automobile brands. Just a real mix of old automobile in here.